Anna Skurbakova and Alexandra Trusova arrived in Beijing to take part in the show. Magic on Ice, a show featuring Russian figure skaters, will be held in the Chinese capital from October 1st to 3rd. Alina Zagatova, Alina Gorbacheva, Mark Kondratyuk, Pyotr Gumenik, Victoria Sinitsina, and Nikita Kotsalapov, Anastasia Messina and Alexander Galiamov will also perform in the show. It became known to what music the new free skating program of the reigning Russian champion in women's figure skating Sofia Akativa is set to. The figure skater and the Terry Tutberids's coaching staff chose the soundtrack from the Russian movie Admiral, which was released in 2008, RIA Novosti Sport reported citing its own source. Recall, Akativa was supposed to present a new free skating program at the Russian national team's test runs in September but due to health problems she was unable to perform. In the 2022-2023 season, 16-year-old Akativa made her debut in adult competitions, winning the Russian championships. Sofia has a command of the Ultra C elements, triple axle and quadruple tulip. During the off-season she suffered a stress fracture in her foot, which caused her to start training only at the end of July. Sofia Akativa and Adelia Petrosian performed at the opening of the first stage of the Battle of the Schools. Battle of the Schools is a team youth competition among athletes from 6 to 12 years old. Akativa's performance went off with a hitch. Before the start of the performance, the music was not turned on the first time. Figure skater Pyotr Gumenik will perform to a cover of a Rammstein song at the show in Beijing. In the summer Gumenik was put a short program to the song Rammstein, Sene, but the skater had to abandon this music. Earlier it was reported that Peter may leave the program to Rammstein in a revised version. Today in Beijing, Gumenik rehearsed a number to a Russian-language cover of Sene by Russian multi-instrumentalist Oleg Abramov, who performs under the pseudonym Radio Tapok. Daniel Grassel will not perform at the Andrei Napella Memorial in Bratislava. The Italian figure skater was announced for the tournament, but it became known that he will not be on the ice. In early September, it was reported that Grassel violated anti-doping rules, he allowed three missed doping tests. Earlier, the figure skater left a Terry Tutbirds's group, where he had been training since January, and returned to Italy. The Italian National Anti-Doping Organization refused to comment on the situation around Italian figure skater Daniel Grassel. According to the source, Grassel's representative said that the skater's justifications submitted by him to the management are still being studied. Moreover, due to the physical and psychological stress caused by this situation, Daniel decided to take a break, temporarily distancing himself from the sport. Recall. Earlier the Italian anti-doping agency confirmed that Grassel had violated anti-doping rules by missing three samples in a row. The decision on sanctions against the athlete has not yet been made. So, at the 2022 Olympics, it became known that trimetazidine was found in a sample from Camilla Valeva. Its low concentration, which could not affect the skills of Valeva, who was already the best skater in the world in the 2021-2022 season could not affect her results. The doping laboratory in Stockholm delayed the verification of an important sample and only by the Olympics the results came back. Sports doctor Jean-Pierre de Munderard in an interview with Radio Canada cools down Wada's fervor a bit, objectively analyzing the case and emphasizing trimetazidine. Officially, the substance is on the banned list, fact. But Mundrar makes one important point. WADA has no evidence and has never produced a single document proving that trimetazidine affects athletic performance. In the past, I defended a wrestler who failed an anti-doping test because of this drug. I asked WADA to provide me with the medical protocols allowing for its ban. I never heard back from them. So it's like what? Yes, it's on the list, it is, but the evidence, well, we don't know. And they shrug. So why is trimetazidine on the WADA blacklist? 
a Canadian doctor says. Servier Laboratories invented the drug in 1964, and it didn't appear on the WADA list until 50 years later. To date, no lab or WADA has conducted research to prove its effectiveness in sport. There are three cases in the code for placing a product on the banned list. First, the product must be effective in improving performance. Second, it must have side effects and third, it must be contrary to sporting and medical ethics. But the first criterion doesn't work in this case. Canadian lawyer David Pavo suggests that yes not everything is so unambiguous. In an interview with Radio Canada, he says, yes, it's possible that Valiva was simply dragged by the Russians into their dirty doping game. But there is a reasonable grain of reason in his words, what is your evidence, WADA? The burden of proof is not on WADA, it always falls on the shoulders of the athlete caught testing positive. It is up to the athlete to clear his name. But because I am an advocate of transparency, I always say, if we have studies today that show that a substance is doping, let's publish them and that will close the debate. Pavo cites an analogy with another case that is known abroad. But the case is roughly of a similar nature. I'll allow myself this comparison, albeit an unconvincing one, for years, Monsanto told us that GMOs were not dangerous to health, without ever doing research on the subject or publishing protocols. We now know that there may be some dangers to human health. I have a little trouble with this culture of secrecy. If WADA has documents that prove a product is doping, then let them show them. The US national team skaters have said they're depressed. But they are fighting for the truth and for the sake of clean athletes. Camilla Valiva has 24 hours before the final of the Russian Grand Prix in Kazan in November. It will be the start of the season for her. There was already a case in Beijing when she went out not only for training but also for competitions after taking part in the trial via video link. And so far it has not been said that she does not want to go to the tournament in her native Kazan. Nina Moser, honored coach of Russia and general director of the Moscow Figure Skating Federation, commented on the words of American figure skater Vincent Joe and Canadian figure skater Megan Demel who accused Russian figure skaters of doping. There have been several offensive statements from Megan DeMel, Vincent Joe, am I not offended to hear all this? I competed with one, my athletes were their competitors. We made DeMel nervous, no wonder she keeps criticizing all of us. It's her character, her humanity. There's nothing we can do about it. I know how to train an athlete without any supplements. I have enough experience to make an athlete a champion just by working hard. I know Vincent, I know a lot of people. I have many years of international practice. I know everybody. They're not bad guys, just, they have some resentment. It's a time where only the lazy aren't trying to pinch and bite us. Let's stand taller, stronger. Let's prove ourselves on the ice, showing what talented children we have. Match TV quoted Moser as saying. A Terry Tutberidze's daughter Diana Davis and her partner Gleb Smolkin, who have represented Georgia since the 2023-2024 season, won silver medals at the Andre Napela Memorial in Bratislava, Slovakia, a Challenger Series tournament. Despite the fact that Davis fell during the free dance, the pair managed to maintain the second place in the table, gained after the rhythm dance. The competition was won by Great Britain's Lila Fur and Lewis Gibson with a score of 200.46 points. Davis and Smolkin scored 188.94 points.